Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, here to take you on a journey back to the Alternity to have a look at Alternity Star Scream. This nutcase tale of cross dimensional hypertime was brought to you by HLJ. His alternate mode is the Mitsuoka Orochi, and everyone but me hates it. I do agree that under the hood it probably has horrible performance, that's the kind of thing that car nerds all know a whole lot more about than I do, but they also don't like the chassis, they don't like the design, they don't like anything about it. I think it looks cool! Uh, I think the best quote I can mine for this is that someone uh, told me the reason they don't like it is it looks like an HR Geiger car, and I was like, that's a bad thing? In terms of automotive functionality, it does have opening doors and things, the hood also pops as well as the trunk, and unfortunately, there's no faux engine detailing. There is just obvious red light piping, and also sometimes you kind of have to untransform this a bit to get the hood flush back in there. Oddly enough though, you can really easily pop up the trunk, but you don't really gain anything out of doing it, because it looks so very much like it's not the inside of a car. Unless the inside of a, of a Mitsuoka Orochi's trunk uh, looks like that. I don't know, I'm, I'm not a car geek, I don't look these things up. The door's also open, but I can tell you that I've actually pulled this little side mirror just out of its socket, trying to open it this way. Oddly enough, the simplest thing to do is to, again, partially untransform him a bit and then push it out from the inside. There is a steering wheel in there, so there's a semblance of an inside. Uh, the chairs are in there too, uh, or seats, I don't know what you car geeks call these, but uh, it does have a spring-loaded mechanism here to allow the door to extend out slightly. Just for a quick shot with his fearless leader, here he is next to Alternity Megatron. He also rolls! Okay, let's transform him. Starscream actually has an alternate vehicle mode. There's a very interesting bit of engineering in the rear wheel's multi-directional sliding tracks, but the end result is... well... <laughs> the flying car mode is the most, um... honorable mention kind of thing I've seen in a while. Uh, the problem being that these things, they fold out like, you know, at this downward angle, um, maybe it's just mine, I'd swear that everyone else's seems to fold up flush, but mine just gets stuck. The tire in there gets stuck on some of the inner sculpting bits. Doesn't really work for me! Alright, let's finish this. Um, whoosh. The legs have a conceptually simple transformation, but you may need some practice to learn the proper angles. The knee sliders should click into place, provided the wheels haven't slid into the way. Folding the toes out is hard without fingernails, and the license plate will take ludicrous glee in popping out at a glance, despite snapping back into place with a bit of required force. If everything is properly aligned, the wheels will clip securely into the grooves of the knee sliders. Like the knee sliders, this may take practice before you get used to the feel of the mechanism. Many of you will learn hatred, fear, and humility when you try to rotate the door flaps into position. The already tenuous ball joints the flaps connect to are designed to separate most easily when at the precise angles that they will assume while transforming. The wingtip panels can be troublesome to click into place. I would recommend pulling them very slightly away from the main wings in order to move them over the friction lock. The shoulder blocks are straightforward and solid but the pieces that fold down to lock the shoulder balls only barely function. It is not a solid or confidence-building connection. The arms themselves are a simple array of swivels, and the seats fold down neatly and tightly. Folding up the hips activates a minor automorph that is nowhere near as difficult to execute as the other alternatives to date, though it also barely accomplishes anything. Unfortunately, the waist clip is just as weak as the shoulder ball locks. And for reference, I usually move the hip joints five clicks down from their car mode configuration. It's an inventive transformation, much cleaner in overall execution when compared to other alternatives, but marred by an uninspired automorph and a few unsatisfying connection points. Alright, let's just get it out of the way. His head sculpt is very weird. It's like the G1 Starscream head, completely out of focus, mixed with the Machine Wars Starscream head crest, which wasn't even a Starscream by design, mixed with having four eyes! On the bright side, the evil quad optics do uh, the light piping thing really well. On the downside, they look weird. Now, I like how they look, but this head sculpt has not worked 
for a lot of people. And I can't really argue with you if it doesn't work for you, because it is weird! He's got a lot of very Starscream-y details to him. He's got the intake things on his shoulders. He's got wings. Those intakes, by the way, eat time and convert it to energy, because that's how Alternity works. Um, the thing about the wings is I like how they look, but you have to fiddle with them, because they're on a non-locking hinge, and they can look crooked pretty easily. And I find I actually have to tilt them just a little bit to get those wing tips to look a little bit more... Uh, aligned on the top uh, invisible dotted line and it doesn't help that these don't really lock in place at all uh, either they kind of flap around this thing can move all over the place if these wings had a way of not so much locking in place but just clicking in place to one main base position it would have helped a whole lot he does uh, look very striking, though, with them on there. The stripes help. It really helps his silhouette. Uh, if you look at him from the back, then, yeah, there's, there's, there's a car. He's got a fake car hood. Interesting idea. I think it works, given that this guy turns into a car. But I'm curious what it would have looked like if they went for a jet motif there, given that they already gave him wings and intakes. He's got his null lasers on his forearms, although these are now the retconning null lasers that actually can shoot you and then hit you when you were born. Starscream! I should have known! Alternity Convoy! Whatever your evil scheme, I'll stop you with my anti hytherion space-time piercing tachyon blasters! These super long-range armaments will- Taste the editorial sting of my retroactive nullifier! I- Ah! Uh, <laughs> oh, reforming head save me! Moving down, you get very Masterpiece Starscream-esque aesthetics with the uh, samurai sheaths, as Kawamori called them, hanging off his sides. I actually really like how he looks from the back. Um, if you can look past the thing about the wings here, I enjoy how he's kind of like a robot that's formed from really curvy, organic-looking car shapes that all kind of run, and their lines slide along each other really sleekly. And then when you spin him around, He's actually a dude who looks like he's a jet robot, aside from the car chest. There is a huge problem that you're all going to hit, which is that these things come off super, super easy. The socket that lets them pop off for safety's sake on this ball joint happens to be aligned just perfectly so that when you're twisting them for the transformation, you're also twisting them off the ball joint. So you kind of have to have a lot of control over how you apply your Newtonian forces with your fingertips. There's a lot of stuff here that I wish locked in place better. Uh, the waist here does clip into something, but it's very loose. It's more just frictioning it in place. And uh, the big one that was a disappointment to me is these parts that lock down onto these tabs on his shoulder very loosely just kind of glide over them. Were just a few of those points a little bit more structurally sound, I'd highly recommend this guy. He goes for some really unique things aesthetically and in his engineering, but due to how there's just bits that are a little bit almost unfinished feeling, it's gonna knock some points off of him. Though I gotta say, he really does fill out the role of a Starscream to go with this Megatron. I think they work out really nicely together, although Starscream's a little bit taller. But let's say you just have Starscream all by himself. What does he do? Not much gimmick-wise. He doesn't have any kind of handheld weapons, although he's got uh, slots in his hands to hold stuff if you can fit it in there. His posability is uh, fairly good. He's got a lot of range on his neck. He's actually able to look straight up, so if you want, you can do a pretty good I'm flying kind of pose. And this is where... Uh, having the wings be kind of free form helps because you can sort of adjust them to whatever aesthetically pleases you and what you feel would be most aerodynamic, ignoring how there's clear windshield involved. His arms, they're fully posable. There's no double jointed elbow, though, which is a little bit of a knock. When a guy is this slender, I really like it if they can work double joints in, and there are none here. Also, there's no waist joint due to the nature of how all this stuff works. Oh, by the way, these hip flaps, they don't get in the way at all. His hip joints are dead effing tight and it's almost to his detriment because unless you're holding him in a very particular way you'll be trying to move his hip and you'll just end up untransforming his uh, connections here a little bit so it's a good thing in that he's not gonna flop but 
it's a little bit too tight, almost. Uh, his knees are also very tight, but they're just a friction joint. Um, perhaps they're this tight because there's a die-cast piece involved. His ankles are also really, really rollable. They can't get to big extremes, so you can't go too wide-legged with this guy. To me, what really says it all about how nicely engineered this guy is, is that when you stand him next to his own alt mode, it's kind of unbelievable that something that sleek and flat turns into something that's that pointy and, well, star screamy. Overall, if you're collecting alternatives, you really should pick up at least one iteration of this guy. If you've never bought an alternate, uh, hard to recommend this one as a debut. He definitely doesn't look like an alternator very much, but that comes with its own little problems. Though, if you like the aesthetics of the robot mode and the vehicle mode, it's worth the hassle. The number of ballsy decisions on the engineering and aesthetics have really won me over on this one, and are helping me look past all its little faults. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis. I hope this was eye-opening for you. If it wasn't, Starscream will just retcon you. God, I love Alternity! Though I still need to get my hands on Bumble to fix all these paradoxes I keep causing. Que sera, sera. <laughs>